afternoon from TFN. Welcome to the November 21st fantastic Friday edition of the Tom O'Brien Show. I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, filling in for Tom while he's on his way back from the uh, West Coast. Hope everybody out there is having a great day. And let's make sure that you and I, that we do everything in our power to have just simply a fabulous and fantastic weekend. Right now, we got the Dow up 84 points. S&P is up 9, Composite up 11, Russell 2000 up 2.5 points. The DAX finished up uh, 248 points to the north. FTSE was up 71. Gold is up uh, about 9 bucks right now. Silver up 30 cents. Our call-in number is 877 927 6648. I'd be honored to take your call. Internationally, you can reach out to us at 727 445 1044. All right, what are these markets doing? Well, can you say A to B equals CD? They're all over the place. So let's uh, let me give you a feel for first what's going on. We're going to go take a look at the uh, intraday charts out here. The larger A to B equals CD pattern. We'll take a look at that as well, just so you can take a look at exactly what's going on in the marketplace. I'm going to switch over to the futures market. That way, we don't have to worry about filling in for slots of time. You know, you don't have to trade the futures, but you absolutely do want to get access to them so you can understand what's going on from a price standpoint. Let's start off with the uh, big dog out here, the NASDAQ. If we take a look at the uh, NASDAQ, this is a 30-minute uh, chart, by the way, that we're looking at on my screen out here. Uh, pull this back. Am I in the right time? Yeah, I'm in the right uh, spot out here. Uh, let me pull this back a little bit further. Come on, work with me. Work, there we go. Okay. So if we take a look at the uh, NASDAQ, we take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern out here. This one has one uh, that uh, starts. Oh, come on. Come on back here. This uh, starts, uh, I'm having trouble there. Let's go take a look at, my apologies, let's go take a look at the ES Mini. I'll go back to the NASDAQ. The ES Mini, so take a look at the S&P futures out here. If we take a look at the uh, low that uh, it was about 9.30 in the evening, November the 16th, or November 21st, that's the point that you would use for an A point of an A to B equals CD to the upside. Market goes ahead, makes a high out here at 2,054, does it at about three, between 3 and 3.30 in the afternoon on November the 18th, makes about a 0.618 retracement. The actual number on my screen says 65%. That's close enough for us. Then we have the explosion as we were coming into that 9.30 to 10 a.m. session. That was on uh, November 20th. That was a couple of days ago. No, that was yesterday, by the way. What does the market do? Market moves strong off that C to D leg out here. Today stops right at the 1% to 1.272A to B equals CD. Now, as it was doing that, let's, let's take a look at it like this. When it gets to the 1 to 1A to B equals CD out here, is there any sign at all of any kind of bears in place? And the answer to that question is absolutely not. Now, tomorrow, during my uh, workshop, during the next seven weeks, where I'm going to be showing you all the little intricacies, all of the tools that you need to understand these patterns, when price is likely to stop in an area. If we take a look at the next level, because there's always next levels out here, and inside the S&P futures on its 30-minute on its, uh, chart out here, there was no way that price was stopping at that one-to-one -one level. Of course, it could have, but there was certainly no signal. A little different story as price gets to the uh, price point to 2,072 out here. I mean, that would be your price projection. Now, you get to exactly 2,071.75 at the uh, 9.30 session. At the 9.30 to 10 o'clock session, as I was going off of the air out here, uh, what we saw was price get up to a high of 2,072 and a quarter. Got to love that. But here's the thing. And here's the interesting thing. All the way up here, during the C to D leg, the first reversal signal that you actually see is right here, and that's at that session between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Number one, we can also see that the market is extremely, what, overbought. If you take a look at the indicator down on the very bottom of my screen out here, that relative strength reading was 90. Now, it's just like a rubber band that stretches. It can only, uh, it can only stretch so far before it snaps back. In this case here, you don't know how far, right? No, you actually do, because the bulls and bears, they absolutely can't hide from you. That's why Japanese candlestick charting is so important. Unfortunately, you can't use candlestick charting on its own, nor can you just use pattern recognition on its own. If you don't marry the two, you're going to have a really bad marriage. And who wants that out there? I mean, that's a really bad relationship. That's the thing that the books don't tell you. That's the thing that most traders overlook. When I say most traders, about 99% of the traders out there. And you don't want to overlook that. That's one of the things that we will be focusing so much time on in, uh, in my workshop out there. That is what I identified that everybody that taught me about these, all the books that I read about this stuff, didn't recognize. 
Steve-O recognized it, though. We had a key reversal session out here as it makes up to 1.272A to B equals CD. Is it a coincidence that it stops there and then gives us a signal? So now what we've seen is a retracement and a pullback. So let's get rid of the A to B equals CD just to measure what's taken place here thus far because the retracement, not that big of a deal, right? If we go from the low, this is of the B to C leg. I'm not even going of the A to D leg. I'm just simply taking a look at the last leg up. If we go from that low to the high out here uh, that uh, came in at uh, 9, between 9.30 and 10 at that 2.72, we're really just below a 0 0.382 retracement. Now, the market could be very well setting up a small A to B equals CD to the downside. I don't know that at this stage. Now, I'm going to go through the reasons why. Yes, the Santa Claus rally, Steve-O the bull, sometimes in a China stop. That hasn't changed at all. But there are some signals out here that if we don't pay attention to, well, we would be silly. We don't want to do that. What we'd never want to do is get our minds so locked in to whatever direction is we believe the market is going in that we don't take a look at the other side of the trade. We must always look at the other side of the trade and see if there's anything that's out there. And there are some things that are out there. If we take a look at the Dow, just an example, so you can just really see the unison, the unity here. The Dow formed an A to B equal C to the upside. Now, the Dow, stronger than the ES Mini. Why? Because it made a 1 to 1.618. A to B equals CD. What did the uh, Dow do? Really the exact same pattern. Has this got to the one-to-one -one level? Any reversal signal? No. In fact, if anything, there was a continuation pattern. Most candlesticks, well, you've got candlesticks, you can put them in three categories. You have those that are truly reversals that you need to know. You've got those that are bullish and bearish that absolutely mean nothing other than you just fill up uh, the, you know, uh, stuff in your mind out there. But they basically mean nothing. They're just kind of interesting. And then you have two candlesticks that are actually continuation patterns out here. You've got one that's called the rising three. Well, that's exactly what took place here at that trading session at 5.30 this morning, after the, uh, between 5.30 and 6, after the uh, Central Bank of Japan said they were going to go ahead and lower interest rates. And that put some real energy into the market. Hey, look, when that price level was hit, you came in to a nice wide-ranging bar. He had a continuation pattern out here. There was no way the price was stopping there. Where was price headed to next? To the next level. At a minimum, to the next level. It could have gone on to the 1 to 2A to B equals CD. But once it got up to the 17.863, went ahead and formed what? Went ahead and formed a key reversal session. Things work. Now, key reversal session versus a reversal day. Two totally different things out there. In order to have a key reversal session, you must have the following three conditions present. You must be in an extended condition. So something that's happening in the middle of a move, just called a reversal, just called a, it's not a key reversal, just a reversal day, just an outside day. A lot of times people get this stuff really confused. And if you get it confused, you might trade off of it and you're going to totally blow it. You're, gonna, you're not going to take the information that the market is providing to you. You've got to get these candlestick signals uh, correct out here, just like you've got to get the patterns correct. In this case here, the market's pulled back. If we take a look at what the market has done, where it's pulled back to, let's do the same thing. Let's take a look at the retracement of this C to D leg, that little doji candle up here to this key reversal. Only a .382 retracement. At this stage, not that big of a deal on the retracement out here. Could be setting up the next A to B equals C to the upside. Or to the downside. Again, what we want to do is kind of put a couple of different things. Not kind of. We want to put a couple of different things together. Now, Russell 2000 has simply just been trading uh, sideways. Oh, I got the 240-minute uh, chart out here. But let's put this on a 30-minute uh, time frame in the case of Russell 2000. Uh, and if we take a look at the uh, Russell, there actually is no A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out here. That's got to make you say, hmm, something to think about. There really was no pattern set up for that. So what did the Russell 2000 do? The Russell 2000 did what it was supposed to do. It got back to its swing points. Whenever you're trading, whatever it is you're trading, and you're trying to identify where is price going to head to, you better keep your eye on the major swing point. Major swing point, what is it? It's a major intersection where price begins to uh, uh, reverse uh, direction. It's just like driving a car. If you're going to drive home tonight, maybe you're listening to the radio right now, and you're going to come to a major intersection out there, maybe one with a stoplight, maybe one with a U-turn out there. So you've got major intersections, and then you've got all those cross streets, you know, into subdivisions and so forth. Those are swing points. Those are roads that you could turn down. These are these little junior ones that we see on the way down here. Now, when we get back from this first break, we're going to take a look at the IWM because from weakness, we get strength. And from weakness, we see weakness out here. And we want to take a look at the IWM. If we finish out the day here, IWM is trading at 116.61.
Well, I'll tell you what that means. This is Steve Rhodes. This is TFN. I hope everybody's having a great Friday. Stay warm out there. I think the warm is coming down, right? I think it's going to be in the nice, in the 70s and 75 and maybe even 80 down here in Florida. Come visit us if you're up in Buffalo. If you can get out of that snow, we'll be right back, folks.